What's up guys, Tao here. So recently Apple has released a magic keyboard for the new 2020 iPad Pros and also we work on the 2018 iPad Pros. I think it is a very, very good addition of very useful tools to add on to your iPad Pro experience. However, not everyone has a 2020 or 2018 iPad Pro and also not everyone can afford one or not everyone is willing to pay for one. Let's face it, it's, it's expensive. So to compact that, for the past few days, I have been using this um, iPad Air 2, ancient iPad Air 2, it's over five and a half years old now. It runs on, currently runs on the iPad OS 13.5 Beta 2, and the whole thing will work on the iPad OS 13.4 or later. I'm just using this whole setup, uh, keyboard and mouse, just to see how difficult it is to use the whole system without me physically touching the iPad at all. So, let's find out. Right, first of all, let me show you guys the iPad setup I have here. As I mentioned, the iPad is iPad Air 2, it's ancient now, it's over five and a half years old. Uh, it still rocks, fantastic. Now the adapter I have here is Lightning to USB 3 adapter. Right now it's connected to this powered USB 3 hub. I personally strongly recommend you guys get a powered USB 3 hub uh, because there are quite a few benefits. First, you can power all those power hungry uh, devices. For example, this external hard drive or USB stick or anything requires uh, additional power and also right now I'm charging the iPad with external power supply you can actually uh, connect the USB lightning port to one of those it actually will charge although it may say not charging but there is still tiny current goes through it um, imagine if you use a 5 watt iPhone charger to charge the iPad so yeah now in terms of keyboard uh, here's the Apple keyboard, it's wired, it's quite old now, but it's still extremely useful. Now, in terms of keyboard, I personally recommend you guys choose a Apple keyboard, either wired or wireless, or the Magic Keyboard, or the keyboard designed with iOS, iPadOS, or uh, Mac in mind. That's solely because the function keys, the command keys, the key combinations, they are a lot easier to remember, especially the brightness, the few function keys on the top, for example, the brightness, it works. You can tell from here. Um, yeah, the brightness works and also the volume. See the volume bar here and it works. And also the music control. I'm not gonna just play for like a second because the copyright. So you can tell it works. In terms of mouse, here I have a third-party generic wired mouse. Um, it's nothing really special about it. Um, yeah, a, it works. But if you have one of those Logitech MX Master 3, so I haven't tried that mouse yet, so there are some side scroll buttons uh, that might be interesting depending where the app is and where you are in terms of the application. So i love to try one day, but for now, this is the setup I have. Right, let's start from the top. There is very, very important key you need to remember or you need to use most of the time. And that key is your best friend. It is the command key. Now, at any time, if you wanna, if you press and hold command key, now they will have some kind of key combination pop up on the screen and tell you what key you need to, com uh, you need to press to get those combinations. For example, right now we're at home screen. If you press and hold command, this is the command for the home screen. But if you go into Safari, if you press and hold command, these are the command for the Safari. Or if you go to uh, word clock, if you press and hold, and there is, there is no command for it. So yeah, if there are commands, it will pop up. If, there no, if there's no command, it's simply it just won't show you. So that is an example. 
Now, in terms of the basic gestures, uh, use a mouse and together with the keyboard, it, it, it took me a little while to figure out uh, how to use the mouse to do all those gestures while use hand. Um, yeah, I'm gonna show you the basic, basic gestures. And first one is go to home screen. So there are different ways for you to use to go to home screen. Um, one, you can use key combination. Um, for example, we are at a uh, word clock. So the method one, you can press command and tab, and you can select, there is, says home screen, and then you can go to home screen. Option two, you can use command and home. You press command and home, that will go to the home screen as well. Now method three, you can use the mouse, for example, now you can see the cursor right here and hopefully you guys can see it. Now if you drag the mouse down and when you see the dock and you keep going and then that will go to the home screen. So these are the three methods you can go to the home screen. Okay, now in terms of switching apps, there are two methods. Uh, well, there are two methods I know of. Uh, one is keyboard, one is mouse. Now, the switching apps, uh, as you probably can see, I keep pressing the command and the tab. You can see, uh, these are the quick switch apps you can use uh, to switch between apps, but this is not a multi-window switching. So, in terms, if you wanna see the multi-window, you have to use the mouse. Now, right now with the home screen, the cursor is here. Uh, if you drag the cursor all the way down to the dock and when when you see the cursor at the bottom of the screen and then you keep dragging the mouse and all the way down until you see the multiple window display. Now this is quite useful, actually it's very useful. To be honest, it took me a little while to figure it out and I'm really glad I found it. So this is very, very useful. Okay, next is switching pages on the home screen. Now there are, again, there are a couple of ways I know. Uh, so first one is very easy. You just click on the mouse and drag the screen like so. And yeah, that, that, that will work. So, but uh, there is another way. So use, use the cursor here. Uh, if you click on the very top of the first app, uh, for example, this is the clock here. You click on that or that does to turn uh, the left page or if you click at the top of the, the last app on the dock, if you click on there, you can see the mouse cursor is here and it actually will turn pages. So this actually is surprisingly useful and handy. So rather than you dragging and do this, uh, I find this actually is quite useful. Next up is the control center and notification center. Now it is quite similar to when you use the app switcher or the multiple window. So for the control center, you just uh, move the cursor all the way to the top right corner here, and then it will show you the control center. In terms of the notification center, it's very similar if you move the cursor all the way up until you see the notification center. So yeah, so this is quite similar if you want to get out of it. Uh, you just drag the mouse down, that's it. That's your notification and control center. Now, in terms of other functions, uh, for example, if you're in the website, now you can use the scrolling on the mouse if your mouse has one of those middle wheel. So you can use that for scrolling. And, or you can use the, the, the error keys on the keyboard, uh, that also will work. Now, if you wanna go to the top, of the web page or the bottom of the web page, there's combination key, command uh, top error or command uh, bottom error that will go straight to the top or the bottom of the web page. And also, you can use the mouse as a uh, you normally use your hand to use it. So, for example, uh, you can drag and drop and do a multitasking and and so on. That is the same. So that gesture has no difference. Uh, between you use your hand or you use the mouse. Uh, the keyboard, uh, there isn't any function for the multi multitasking, uh, multiple window, but everything is done to the mouse. Uh, also, you can uh, assign different uh, multiple windows onto it. And yeah, voila. 
So here you can see there are different kind of, yeah, the keyboard simply it won't work. Now, yeah, it's pretty sweet. Right, we talk about those great functions uh, with the combination of the keyboard and the mouse. So what is not working or at least what I have not figured out yet. First, it's, um, it's a funny one. I cannot zoom, zoom out rather on certain apps, for example, the Google Earth. So the easy way to zoom in is just double click. Uh, for example, you just click, double click on that. Or you just double click. Uh, think, nope. The command plus minus doesn't work. And also the Google Earth, it doesn't have any commands for me to use it. So I cannot zoom out unless I pinch zoom in, zoom out. Uh, but in this instance, the trackpad is gonna be very, very useful because it can e easily pinch zoom in, zoom out. Oh, screenshots. Okay, perfect. This actually leading to the second point, which is I have not figured out yet. You see this sharing option here. You can see the airdrop, all those you can share to different apps. Now, there are more, but I cannot get to those. Simply, I, I, I can't. If you use the mouse and click and drag, it just doesn't work. The screw wheel, it just only up and down. There's no left and right. Ugh, frustrating. Um, again, the trackpad is going to be very, very useful for this occasion. Yeah, but mouse, it just doesn't cut it. Now, the keyboard also not working. Okay, and also there is another one. So, we are on the Safari here. So, if you press command, if you press and hold command, there are loads and loads of command key or command key combinations here. You can see there are three dots. That means there are three pages. Now, I can only see the first page. And I cannot, for the life of me, go to the second or the third page. Again, this just doesn't work. This is really frustrating. And if you click on the dots, oh, now it works. Oh, hello. Ah. Correction, I, you can go to this, the, the next page. So now the trick is you do not click on the actual dot, you click just above the dot. And then you can choose the pages. Oh, right, I see. Sweet. All right, this is it. Um, overall experience actually is pretty smooth. The more you use it, the longer you use it, the more experience you will gain from this setup. So either iPad Pro or any iPad running on the iPad OS 13.4 onwards, and any Bluetooth keyboard and a wireless keyboard, a mouse or wired, you will get very, very similar experience. Now I'm going to set up again. This is not extremely comprehensive. There are so many different ways of using them. So this is just a small demonstration or simple demonstration. Now, if you guys have any questions or if you guys have any different experiences, please leave the comment down below so we can all share. So this actually is a big step forward for Apple for iPadOS. So it's more and more like a computer now as you guys can see, but still not quite there yet. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Please leave the comment if you have one or like the video if you enjoyed it, you know, or consider subscribe, you know, for the future video updates. So yeah, see you guys in the next video.